Welcome back to another rebuild. I'm out of 23, and today it is going to be the Indianapolis Colts. And I was really debating on do I want to do a draft pick Indianapolis Colts rebuild or a Lamar Jackson one, where there's a good chance that Lamar Jackson's getting traded to somewhere. And right now, based on like capital and you know salary cap and you know ability to move money around and actually get him, they're in one of the better spots, I would say. However, it is interconference. Would you actually want to trade them in the same conference? I don't know if they're going to have much of a choice, right? Like you got to you got to get something for them at the end of the day. If he plays well, it doesn't really matter if you have to beat him to get to the Super Bowl every time. You know, if he plays well, you're going to be screwed anyways. You're going to look dumb and it doesn't matter, right? Like it's not like you're trading him interdivisional conference. You still it is what it is, right? Like it is what it is. Now, based on where the Colts are drafting this year is obviously going to play a huge factor in this trade. So, it's not going to be as lucrative as you might like to think. The way I have this kind of going would be a first this, a second this, a first next, another first in 2024, and then probably a third next year. Uh, with that trade. So that would be three first round picks, uh, one second and one third. The reason why I see that is that the Colts, even though the division is kind of weaker, you can maybe make a run in this division. The Colts are definitely nowhere near the built roster the Browns were when they made the trade for Deshaun Watson. So when you're thinking of the Texans, you're like, okay, we're definitely not getting a great return on investment here. Whereas the Colts could still be a top 10 picking team, even if they get Lamar. So, I think that also plays a factor, and of course, pick four overall is massive. Pick four overall is basically, you know, two 19th overall picks, which is massive, right? So, you're technically still getting more. But, let's see if the trade actually goes through, and it does. So, the franchise quarterback is here. Uh, we're going to knock this trade out, uh, like I said, trying to trying to get this settled as much as possible. Still going to owe them a first round the following year, but that is okay, as we will... Uh, I don't know who the hell they wouldn't want to keep. I don't want to draft pick off them as uh, we will have our franchise quarterback. So we got to pay Lamar about 21 mil this year as far as draft picks goes. Not great this year, but next year's okay. You know, no third, but that second round pick, maybe you trade it down and no first next year. So it's going to be a little challenging to rebuild this team. But once again, you have that franchise quarterback. The thing that would kind of, you know, make this where I don't know if the Colts will actually do this is when you really look at their history with like mobile quarterbacks, they really haven't sought that out, right? Like Andrew Luck and like Scott Tolzien are like the last decently fast guys they've gotten, and they're not even close to as fast as Lamar Jackson. So it is, uh, I got to change some of these contracts. You know, these guys are in free agency. They got more money than real life, basically. For, so I have to change those. But we have a lot of capital. We can still make plays maybe next offseason in the free agency. Uh, we'll see how this goes. Like I said, I think it's a little more realistic that the Colts maybe just draft QB at four. Everyone keeps saying Anthony Richardson. I still keep saying Will Levis, but we'll see what happens. Maybe it's Hendon Hooker, apparently. You know, people going crazy with that chance. But yeah, franchise quarterback Lamar Jackson, welcome. I also still feel like maybe I'm just not the greatest quarterback evaluator, but I feel like Garner Minshew is what um, Kurt Benkert could be. No? Like, I feel like Ben Kurt's not bad at all. And I feel like he needs, he, you know, needs a chance as a backup quarterback in the NFL, but pretty sure he's playing. Is he in the XFL now? I can't remember. But this is what the roster looks like pre-draft. Still have some free agents that are, you know, potentially signable as well. Uh, left tackle wouldn't hurt, but I think, you know, Ryman was kind of toted as a guy that could be the guy. So I'm going to I'm gonna leave him there for now and see what happens. Uh, center definitely needs to be improved. Tight end, Jelani Woods definitely has chance in real life, but in-game, man, 24 years old, that normal is rough. Uh, wide receivers could be fine. We'll see. Uh, Isaiah McKenzie, super cheap deal. Uh, not a bad deal at all. Uh, Pittman, he's the guy at number one. Uh, number two, we'll see with Pierce. Uh, not a terrible rookie year. Uh, D-line, a lot of uh, throwing uh, darts at the wall and hoping something sticks. I don't know what the damn saying is. Uh, but we're going to have Ebu Cam as well after this week, I imagine. Middle linebacker wouldn't hurt. Safeties, I can live with the youth. Quarterback might need, you know, some fixing. But, yeah, it's not a bad roster. It's just probably not good enough to make the playoffs this moment, I would say. I mean, I guess Lamar, if he can carry, but see how they want to use him as well. Just kind of situation where it's like Colts, instead of risking on, you know, a prospect, a project player, maybe just get a guarantee. 
But I do also kind of want to do a rebuild where I take either Levis or Anthony uh, Richardson. So we'll see about that as well. Uh, Deion Jones has an offer. I kind of want Deion Jones. I kind of want him. I really don't want to give him a three-year deal, but I do want him. Three or 13.5. I mean, we're desperate. We do have a higher offer than the Bears, who don't need any more linebackers. Stop it. So expect some weak drafts, especially in this season. Pick 16, is that like, is that correct? Is this a real? Man, DJ Turner is there. That would be kind of busted. Land another corner. Do have Mike Morris, but don't technically need DT just yet. Brent could be a true number two with Kenny Moore going to the slot, even though Kenny Moore is like the best corner here by far. But you also have the option to trade down, which is definitely an underrated option here. Yeah, we're going to get a little bit of height here in Indy with Julius Brents. 91 speed, 91 excel. Jumping's apparently terrible, despite an insane vertical. Uh, we'll have to fix that, I suppose. Not that it probably matters too much in sim anyways, but it is what it is. Pick four in the fourth round. Uh, might be more defense. We'll see. You know, best available pick is kind of my, my mantra. I feel like that's what everyone kind of does, but linebacker could definitely be helpful, but it wouldn't really be... No, nah, it would be helpful this season. We could start someone. Uh, do we go with Papawi? Or we can wait for Herbig. Rusher of Edge wouldn't be the worst. Kind of want to get O'Shawn Mathis. You know, it's been a while since I've used him, and he's a decent projection. Uh, we could really use O-line too, but I think I'm going to get myself a linebacker. 22 years old, 449 versus... Mapu, who is also 22, uh, 4, 5, 3, a bit bigger. Could also maybe wait and see if one of them maybe falls a little bit, perhaps. I don't know. Could use one more offensive lineman. But are any of these guys worth it? I think Zero is the only guy that's hidden here. And obviously he's six foot seven. Can't exactly play center. Actually, we don't even need center. What the hell am I even thinking? He could, he could play guard. He's pretty athletic. I think I might actually go Zier and play him at guard. And you gotta remember in these rebuilds, obviously we're using, you know, Bengals class. His class would look different from others, I would say. So if you're saying, oh, Zier makes no sense here, six seven, he's undrafted projection, whatever it may be, just insert in your mind who is a better fit for the team and just say, okay, guard. So basically this pick is guard. It doesn't have to actually be Zierer. The pick is guard, if you will. So you know what I mean? Like, just just think of it as a draft pick of a right guard. That's all you got to think about. But I think I'm going to trade up. I'm, I want Mathis at four in the fifth round if I can. Uh, and then I think here I'm going to try to trade up for a linebacker. So hoping those linebackers stick around, which so far they kind of have, which is nice. Robert Scott, linebackers are still here. Freeland, the superstar, still looking good for a linebacker. We like that. This is probably where linebackers are going to start going, right? And still around. I mean, they're still here. Pace? Okay, finally. So the Browns, which if we want to trade up from four in the fifth round, wouldn't even cost us that much. But let us make a play. So we trade 155 this year, a 7th this year, and 188 next year for 120. I know it's really counterproductive for a team that doesn't have high draft picks to be trading away quantity, uh, but it is what we, it is. We're going to get ourselves a starter. DJ Turner might still be there, but he would not be in real life. So we are going to go with... Did I sell? Oh, Mappy's right there. Mr. Marty Mapu, or Marte, I don't know, it looks like Marty, whatever, super athletic starter. And I'm just hoping, my guys here, I probably could have went slow sim, but I am just way too lazy for that, so I'm uh, just hoping a pass rusher of some sort is here. We have Mathis, Beal, who I actually scouted a little bit more, Windman, I think Windman's the only guy with actual hidden, but I don't really, I don't really care too much about that. So, decently athletic Beal with a B power move, block shot of B to C, that's not terrible, would be a new name. What is Mathis? Is he 21? He's 22 as well. I would say Mathis is probably better, but we're going to go with a new name, I think. Mr. Robert Beal. Robert Beal it is. Why not? 86 speed, 88 excel. It's a new name. It's a new name. What can I tell you? I think we will technically have to give Ebu Cam a chance at starters because they paid him decent money, but if he struggles early, oh, I'm replacing him. He has a UDFA... Uh, Grade. So we're going to go with Jalil Billingsley, add some speed here. Uh, 86 speed, 86 excel. Kind of unusable. And the Colts fans are like, wow, another tight end. I'm sure that's a position that we see as uh, super needy. 
And I'm obviously ignoring guys that just shouldn't be there. Michael Jefferson, I grab all the time in these rebuilds. Add some more depth to the wide receiver room. Big fella as well. Uh, but that's pretty much going to be it for this draft. Uh, it took a lot of strength to not, you know, trade up more than I did. Very weak drafting class uh, in general, though. 71 corner, 70 right tackle is going to be a guard. 70 middle linebacker, 67 edge, 62 tight end. 68 wide receiver, but at the end of the day, we did only have, you know, third round picks and beyond. And for a team that only had a third round pick and beyond, it was still like a mid third, so it's like it wasn't even great. But I suppose Brents will be our new number two cornerback. Beal maybe gets a chance at edge, but I don't see it happening. So we landed three starters with a chance at a fourth. But anyways, have you guys been enjoying these types of rebuilds where it's like a move from real life or a projected move from real life? Maybe leave a like, maybe subscribe if you're new, if you're not new. Really appreciate your continued support. Let's get in on this. I don't know. This could be a long journey. It could be a short journey. The team, like I said, is like an average place. Really kind of comes down to how we can develop the team that we have right now and if we can land some steals in the future draft classes, which we should at least have, you know, that second round pick. Also about to trade our first round pick for next year, which like I said, I think would clear us. I think I think that's the trade. Three first round picks, a second and a third, with the knowledge that this team is giving up high quality first round picks. Uh, and obviously pick four is huge. That is that is up there. So really the toughest part of this rebuild, in my opinion, is what playbook do I run? I kind of want to rock this Colts early on just to see, you know, what happens if he plays in their scheme rather than them catering to Lamar. But at the same time, you have Lamar Jackson, you have Jonathan Taylor, you have Pittman, you have a really good offensive line. You have a real good chance to become easily the best rushing team in the league. Do you not take that? We'll see what we do. We'll see what we do. But defensively, you know, not bad, obviously. Some positions we want to upgrade. Hopefully, Brents gets a breakout early. Same with Nick Cross, Mapu. You know, if we can even get two of those three to have a breakout before the season is over, that would be a massive, massive win. But yeah, the, the biggest question mark I have right now is what scheme do I run? So we're going to rock the Colts for a while, see how they play into the strengths, you know. If Lamar Jackson's thrown for like 400 yards a game with no rushing stats, but we're winning, I guess I leave it. But if that's happening and we're losing, which is probably what will happen, I don't know. I don't know. But, ooh, camp stand out. Always a win. Always. Quitty. It is Quitty. Go with the rush of the passer, which gives him two styles plus three, which is beautiful. Camp standout's always a win. Whether you get the damn thing or not, don't matter. Especially for like a DB where you get like plus five to man or zone coverage, which is insane. Outside linebacker though, no one cares. It's like five play record tackling, like it's the worst thing ever. We're actually having a pretty good season right now, and we also have a pretty good idea of how broke we're going to be, which is very... Uh, this is a season where... Oh, Isaiah Rogers only normal dev. This is a season where we have to pay a lot of core players. Obviously, that's going to start with, you know, Lamar Jackson and... You know, it's probably going to end with Pittman. We're going to lose some players, but I think we can handle it. You know, most teams have to pay a quarterback pretty top-tier money. Lamar Jackson, I would say, is probably a five-year 45 per, but fully guaranteed type of player. So that's likely what I'm going to offer him. Oh, I forgot how bad the game is. I offered him exactly what he wanted, but I turned the majority of it into guarantees and the game said no. Oh, I forgot about how bad the game was. That's my bad. That's that's just I I've, I've made a huge mistake. 6 year 66 is about 11 mil per, which for the running back market isn't terrible even though Jonathan Taylor is him. Uh 42 mil left over, but we do have Lamar Jackson's number kind of fa factored in. I mixed up factored and figured and almost got canceled. Uh 5 year 80 for Michael Pittman. Kenny Moore is a guy that is short, let me tell you that much, but he is still going to be good, I'd say, so let's go with a one-year 14. Yikes, really? One-year 14 seemed like very fair comp for for small, small men. Uh, good block shitting from Stewart, but once again, there's going to be cap casualties. There's going to be, well, we don't even call them cap casualties. We call them Lamar casualties at this rate. Um, which, of course, is just quarterback casualty. Uh, there's going to be some, and I think it's going to be Kenny Moore or Stewart, or maybe even both. Obviously paid the man himself, uh, Blackman, who's obviously 
Super young, good value contract. Uh, Lamar Jackson's the focus, though. So, like, can I just, can I, guys, can I just cheat? Please. He's also wearing number one, which is interesting. But can I just cheat? Please. Like, just, just let me do one of these. Why not? Why not? Like, what, well, like, what are, what's, what's the big idea here? You know, this is what he's going to be asking for. Forty-five per, fully guaranteed. Without a without an agent, I think he's going to settle for that. And by settle, I mean that's great comp. Uh, Forty-five, I believe, would make this fair. If I'm not mistaken. So I'm pretty sure that's that's correct, right? We're bro. Oh crap! I just sold so hard. This actually happened. I just sold so hard. Okay, I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to save this. Uh, there's a glitch in the game that is obviously something that they would not have factored in. But if you edit a player's contract while they are currently uh, evaluating their offers, you just lose all that money. So uh, I do not know how to get out of this one. This happened to me in my Vikings franchise. Thankfully, the franchise just died because EA screwed us. Um, I don't know how to get out of this, actually. I think I might have to just lower Lamar's money, I suppose. Because you guys seen that we should have had money over, right? Like, you guys seen that. I don't even know. I can't even change his number either. I guess I remove 650 mil. I'm going to remove money until it says that we have the fair comp. So our contracts are all sorts of messed up now, trying to fix that error. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. It is something I completely forgot about, but yeah, for some reason, it just, the money goes away. It just goes away. It says you have a ton of cap space, but you actually don't. Um, yeah, that's super fun. This is going to be really interesting now because I'm going to have, I guess it really doesn't matter too much because... Uh, as long as Lamar is on the contract and the money is being technically accounted for, this is more of an issue in a league where, uh, you know, you don't have full control. Like, it's a user league and, you know, people understand uh, that a glitch has occurred. Um, but, yeah, super disappointed that the game still has that error in the game. I get it is something that's not super common, right? Like, if you're going to just edit a contract, you would probably just do that without actually, you know, paying the contract first. So yeah, that's uh, that's my tip for you. If you are going to edit a contract because the game is stupid and they're not accepting a contract that is definitely fair, make sure you withdraw the offer first. Otherwise, they're going to basically say that that money you offered is just like a bonus, I guess. You guys seen it. We were negative 40 mil despite giving them literally the same offer that would have put us at 9.1 mil. Not sure why that's a thing, but... Then again, I just watched a, a Gut Fox Twitter video where he literally couldn't see his score or the time or the play clock or anything like that. So, I mean, it is what it is. We've had videos of uh, people with full office buildings on the field because of some glitch from uh, Face of the Franchise. And Nick Cross just sold so hard. And the way I'm talking about it is you would have thought this was all like recent or like new you would have thought this was when the game first came out, but nope, it is not. And once again, we talked about being broke as hell. More cap casualties might include Isaiah Rogers, but at the same time, that contract isn't the worst. No. Oh, my God. We didn't negotiate in the years. But either way, keeping the Colts playbooks, uh, we're in the playoffs. That's not bad. And 11-6, and six, uh, we get to play the Patriots, who we just beat as well. Super close, in fairness. Uh, but not a bad season. With the Colts playbooks, we like to see that. Uh, this is how the season went. Kind of curious to see how these stats are, though, as I don't really pay attention to Colts too much. I've seen them have a couple of pretty good seasons with rookie QBs. Uh, Lamar Jackson, really good touch on a pick ratio, just under 4,000 yards. Obviously, you're going to see a lot of rushing yards and a lot of rushing attempts with Jonathan Taylor. I mean, touch on a pick ratio, that that's great. Yards are a little down, I will say, but... I guess for Lamar, that's not a bad season. Really debating on how I want to go about this because if we just made the playoffs and we looked pretty strong with this, you know, group of players and this, uh, you know, scheme, why change what's working, right? Really good blocking even. Like, I don't know. I think I'm just going to let it happen. I'm just going to let it happen. If the touchdown to pick ratio is good, that's good enough for me. 
Uh, Edge was really bad, specifically with Quiddy Pay. Buckner was pretty solid. Interceptions were super low. Kicking from the long-term man, Matt Gay, was decent, but didn't really ask a lot from him. Rigoberto Sanchez with a decent yards per punt. Kicker turn putt return game was pretty weak. Who would have won MVP is the question I have, and the answer is Joe Burrow. Uh, not on the list, really. I know the, t- the yards were low and the touchdowns were kind of low, but touchdown to pick ratio was really good. 5-4 Offensive Player of the Year. No for Defensive Player of the Year. Bryce Young with Offensive Rookie of the Year. Napu at number four, which is super sad for Defensive Rookie of the Year. Lamar at seven. Jonathan Taylor at four. Nothing for wide receiver. Uh, O-line, I would have thought there was more than this, but three and six, I suppose, is still on the board. Bunch of Bills defensive linemen there. Uh, was it a couple of Jets in there, too? Bills and Jets. Bills, Jets, Bengals made up like the whole list pretty much. DB, no. Kicker, no. Texans had two kickers. <laughs> Greedy. Uh, I don't expect us to win it all year one, but you know what? Against a lower overall Patriots team, maybe you get yourself at least a win. It's going to be interesting to see how this team goes. Obviously, there's some old men contracts that are maybe uh, things you move on from them, but... I mean, our money is kind of strapped right now, and our draft capital isn't the best after the trade, but we'll be able to manage it. Don't even worry about it. 17-14. to 14. Touchdown would put us in a bit of a bad spot, which it does. Huge. Oh, that rushing touchdown was it. Uh, is it over? Yep, it's over. So losing to the Patriots in kind of an upset fashion. Patriots, another team that are kind of somewhat linked to Lamar. Uh, but, yeah, Lamar Jackson did not have a great game there really debating on what I want to do because like I said we're not utilizing Lamar's legs and in general I mean the season wasn't great but at the same time any scheme that's going to utilize the running of the quarterback isn't going to throw the ball much so you're going to have to take a loss no matter what I think I might try Buffalo but then again you're not going to utilize Jonathan Taylor much because Buffalo's scheme probably isn't going to look at the running back as a great option it's going to be just all through the quarterback but Man, it sucks because we did just make the playoffs at eleven and six with a you know an average team. I think you just keep the Colts playbooks until things go bad, right? Texans are in the Super Bowl, okay? It did, you know they did get Bryce, but still they lose anyways. But still, that's that's an impressive season for them. All right, looking at the Dev ups, uh, Jelani Woods does get to star. I mean, it changes things a little bit, but twenty five years old, seventy two overall. I mean. It makes it where it's not such a big need that we have to focus on it, I suppose. And then defensively, Mapu goes up in dev. Sadly, Cross and Brents do not. Brents is still my number two, but man, that's a rough one. I will say I'm kind of debating on just letting Isaiah Rogers go. We're broke as hell anyways, and I figure, I mean, we're probably going to the draft cornerback at some point because Kenny Moore is not going to be there that long. It's not going to be the long term. And if we don't sign up Isaiah Rogers, but we find a nice rookie corner, we could put Kenny Moore in that slot role, which, of course, he's smaller and probably built more for. And now it does say that we have 85 mil. I wonder if it actually fixed itself. I, I kind of want to take a look at the projected Colts cap. I'm kind of thinking that it may have actually fixed itself, which means I can offer Lamar the proper contract. But at the same time, we've seen it in the past where, uh, you know, you can go from one year to the next with so much different in money. But either way, I'm going to I'm gonna put Lamar back at 200 mil. Actually, I think it should be like 180 because technically a season just went by. Or 190 because he would have made 20 mil this year. I think that's correct. Either way, I, I if we just overpaid and, you know, we're, we're actually paying Lamar secretively 90 mil, it is what it is. We'll deal with it. I don't really care. Uh, but Grover Stewart was decent. Don't really want to replace more positions than I need to. So if Grover's down for like a $13 million contract, bro, his ask was 10 and I gave him 13 and he said no. And as much as I had that plan with Isaiah Rogers, the three or 20 is kind of looking more enticing. Um, I think we're going to re-sign Rigoberto, and I think we are going to let Isaiah Rogers go. We'll see what we can do with DT. $45 million to work with. Kind of want to pay attention to who we have to replace or re-sign, though, uh, just so we know what we're we're getting into. I also forgot to edit those contracts. So Isaiah McKenzie made like five mil last year and five mil this year. Whoops. That's a little bit of money. Uh, DT's obviously a positional need. 
Werfs is in here. Derek Henry, I don't even really need that position. Lindstrom got paid in real life. Rashawn Gary's going to get paid. T. Higgins would be traded. Tremaine Edmonds is paid. Derek Brown's a good question mark, but at this point, it seems like he's on the path to being paid. Adrian Amos, the X Factor. Of course, a guy that's probably going to be bouncing around in real life a bit. At least that's my kind of opinion. Don't want to waste Nick Cross, though. 22 years old. I know he's normal. Did have a breakout if he would have got it. You know, things would have changed a bit. As much as Amos is decent, he could provide a boost right now. I still think, you know, this might be a three- to four-year rebuild. And I don't want to, like, spend a lot of money now, hurt the rollover a little bit, and still not compete anyways. Uh, I don't know, dude. This is, this is a tough one. Devin White, Jordan Brooks... Rashawn Gary could really use edge, but Rashawn Gary... I mean, the Packers aren't in the best of spots. Maybe they, they lowball Rashawn and he wants to leave because of it. There's just something that tells me that Rashawn Gary is going to be a Packer for some time, though. But at the same time, we know that Indianapolis covets these cornerstone defensive players. I mean, look how much they paid to get to Forrest Buckner. This, you know, you didn't have to pay anything other than the actual cap itself. Man, a six-year 135 is a lot competing with the Giants on that one. It is co opposite conference, at least. It took three skips to get Grover Stewart here, and nobody wants Brandon Ayuk. I've offered him a three-year 45, which I think is pretty fair, to be honest, and he has not budged. But I just think that we've proven that maybe we don't need the biggest of names to compete at that wide receiver position. So a three-year 45 is quite a bit of money anyways, but the three-year, what, 52 mil that he's asking for is a little bit out of the range that I'd like to spend considering Pierce still does probably have a chance to develop. And Rashawn Gary, I just didn't believe we were going to get him, so I just pulled the offer. And even if we could have gotten him, that is a lot of money to pay where we can maybe develop someone this year. I don't know, like draft and develop, only eight sacks as well, so... Don't know if the 4-3 would be great for him, so, you know, I, it was a tough pass, but I think we had to. And there are some new names in town. Kenneth Murray uh, on a 3-year 12, and Brandon Ayuk on that 3-year 45 that we mentioned, which I wasn't budging on. If he wanted to join, he wanted to join. If not, he didn't, you know, it is what it is. We showed that we are capable of being a legit team, and I think Ayuk is just outside that realm of, like, a tag-and-trade situation based on the way he played here in this realm. Also, nice to see that he has an upgrade point, which is cool. Alec Pierce will still play, though. He'll be the number three. Technically, Isaiah McKenzie shouldn't even be here, so realistically, he did have a pretty good season. I'll, I'll edit him down a, th a one-year three compared to the one-year one he got this season. Uh, let's just change this real quick, make it a little bit easier on myself. So two mils, I guess, would make it a one mil salary. Yeah, the more guarantees you give, the better chance you have at a lower contract anyways. So, you know, you give someone a fully guaranteed three mil, they might take that over like an obvious one year five if, you know, three of that mil is salary, two is bonus, whatever, you know what I mean. Um, but, yeah, looking at what we need, left tackle wouldn't be the worst. So we're always going to be looking at uh, offensive lineman, but it's not the most biggest priority. I'd say the biggest priority right now is probably edge slash DT as we may lose both DTs next season uh, and corner wouldn't hurt. But once again, we got some youthful names. You got some guys that can develop, but at the same time, we got some aging pieces that are also specifically expensive that we will need to kind of replace. But as far as draft picks goes, not going to be great. No third round pick and that second round pick is going to be late. So basically in the same kind of boat we were last offseason. All right, pick 23 in the second round. There's another, I don't know if he's going to be there because he was a 2-3. to three. There's another 6 for 4 cornerback that is definitely intriguing me. Uh, is he actually there? He, of course he is. I kind of wish he wasn't, but Sherrod Whitmore, 22 years old, 6 foot 4, very thin, but super athletic. Puts Brents in shame. But at the same time, we just talked about how Kenny Moore probably should be the number three rather than an actual top two cornerback on the squad. Uh, it would be the better fit. Two six four corners and then like a lockdown slot. I mean, that's tough to pass like on, like literally pass on, like physically pass the ball against. Uh, we have a couple of linemen. So if we were to play this perfectly, we would draft the corner now, do something to trade up for the DT Bartell, 
And then hopefully the day three centers, one of them's there in like the fifth, take a player there and we're cooking. Ah, man, do I really want to take a shot on Whitmore? If he's normal, this could be a huge L. But at the same time, super athletic, good man coverage, zone could be a B as well, probably a C though. Um, Yeah, I'm going to grab him. And he is hidden, which is nice. Uh, 94 speed, 92 excel, 89 jumping. I mean, these types of 6'4 corners seem to be star plus like every single time. But at this pick, I'm probably going to go to like 12, and I'm going to hope that DT's there. I mean, we don't really have the craziest trade-up, you know, kind of situation going for ourselves. So at the end of the day, uh, you know, we have to play it a little riskier, and I really think that DT looks good. Probably another one of those normal types. But I actually, you know, considering we don't have a roster spot for that person right now, if they're not 21, I might actually not even trade up for them now that I'm thinking about it can't develop a normal dev player too well anyways when they're not starting and he is 22 he's a good player pretty athletic i might regret it but considering we're kind of not looking great for draft capital i think i moved down i might even take one of the tight ends there's two athletic tight ends i'd wait until one of them goes so we're gonna be paying attention to that and the centers i think and then we can always just take uh honeycut he's an undrafted projected B block shed, C finesse, at worst, a C power move. Maybe he's decent, I don't know, but I think that's going to be our goal. We trade a third next and a fifth this year to the Giants for 86. You know, maybe banking on that we suck, or just in general don't find that the draft is that good this year. Uh, that is going to be the trade. And with that, we're actually going to take Robert Porter, who once again is pretty athletic. He's 6'5", 274, 21 years old. And with that athleticism, I think his ceiling is so much higher than the 25-year-old uh, Jelani Woods. Don't know what the dev is going to be, but I imagine his overall is going to be very similar, which is worth it. And he is hidden. So basically, no matter what, Jelani Woods is done, I suppose. And it sucks because it's like, in the realm of realism, why would they get rid of you know Woods, who just had a lot of touchdowns, went up in dev, but at the same time, in the Madden realm, 72 overall, 25 years old, it's just not going to develop, dude. I'm telling you, it's just not going to. So we trade 119 this and 132 next for 99 from Seattle, which is where we're going to be taking a center who, uh, I don't know what position he's going to play. Maybe he does play center for the future, but looks good. The potential's there, I think. And uh, I will say this, DT looks good, but a nose tackle and a 4-3 uh, uh, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but uh, Corey Durand, 21 years old on top of it, looks decent, and he's hidden, which is nice. Of course, could have been normal. There seems like a lot of these guys are hidden, but very well could have been normal. All right, from 183 uh, to 161 with a seventh next year with the Bears will be that undrafted projected DT. Uh, maybe not quite the uh, perfect draft, but it look I mean, so far pretty good considering... Uh, Tyrone Honeycutt, normal development rate, 89 strength, 69 speed. Wish he was 21 because obviously he's not going to start right now. But, I mean, if any of those key potentials look even close to that, I'm just saying he might be uh, the future. You never know if he's you know if he has some decent ratings to work with. And then we're going with a 4-4-3 power back Heath Burley here in the seventh round. 90 speed, 88 excel. Not bad, assuming he's like in the 80s for trucking. And I do want to take a look at Bartel because he actually did go damn close to the fourth round. So I want to take a look at him. But let's see what we got. Some pretty good overalls, actually, considering where we're selecting. Once again, this will be the new number one corner, believe it or not. Uh, I think. I don't know, dude. Maybe you do give Kenny Moore one more year as the starter just to give, you know, he's a high overall um, but 69 overall for the DT, 69 overall for the running back. What's, what's the ratings? But you could work with that. 70 power move, E 73 block shed rating. That's not bad. I don't know if we will, but if we're literally super stuck, we can use him. Uh, and as far as Whitmore goes, it's obviously a little raw, but for his height and speed, he's really talented. Uh, I would imagine star. We've seen so many of these guys be star devs. I don't know what number... 26, and yeah, he is star. I got to do what I can to get Lamar to number eight as well. Uh, but let's take a look at Mr. Robert Porter. He is the number one tight end going into this season. Deep route obviously sucks, but so much potential outside of that. I mean, the size with the speed, I mean, it's kind of crazy. 
and he's superstar on top of it. Yeah, um, okay, pretty solid. Durand, he is kind of built. I know the weight's a little low. He's a very good pass blocker. Could play tackle or, you know, I mean, left tackle maybe because Ryman, he's... Eesh. I think I'm going to put him at left tackle for now, but I don't know if he'll actually play there. What's his dev? Star. If he was superstar, that would have been clutch, but yeah, I can only get so much. And then I guess we'll take a look at Burley real quick since we've looked at everyone else. And yeah, I mean, just worth the pick every time. Every time. Those types of players are so easy to see. And I do remember which team took Bartell. Uh, it is the Lions, so they got one in the first round and the third round. Both picked 26, obviously. He was hidden. 79 block shed, 72, or 72 block shed, 79 finesse, which is really solid. And his dev is star. But, yeah, I mean, he would have been worth the pick, but I also don't hate what we did. So, either way. We trade Jelani Woods and Granson. Uh, I'll, I'll miss you, Grandson. Uh, and a six round next year to the Broncos for fourth round this year. They be bad at that position. We've definitely weakened ourselves a little bit, but I'm obviously not going to pay Jelani Woods or Grandson when they need contracts. So I'm just going to live with what we got. All right. Season two roster, definitely far from perfect, but also with that superstar tight end added in very much. So improved with Ayuk as well. And we have our new left tackle or center in for the future, ready to go. So this offense might not change a whole lot outside of, like, if we go broke or something, we have to lose a lineman or two. Uh, and then defensively, definitely wish we had better pass rush options because we're so against it with draft capital and, you know, salary. Uh, I think I'm going to give Robert Beal a chance. He's very similarly rated to Ebukam, and Ebukam has kind of been, like, a career backup. So why not let him play that role anyways and, you know, come in and, you know, give a, a boost to the defense when we need it most. And I am going to give Brents the number two's job with Kenny Moore at number three, just because I think, once again, we need to develop the youth on this team, specifically on defense, as that is where we uh, lack the most veteran presence, if you will. Uh, Kenneth Murray is the number one middle linebacker with Deion Jones being the backup. Uh, definitely uh, a very good linebacking group now. Uh, maybe some, I wouldn't say has-beens, but guys that are definitely on the de decline but still can provide a huge boost. So uh, I say that as like Leonard, uh, you know, he's he's a good player overall and X-Factor-wise, but 29 years old, uh, he's not going to get better from here. Uh, you know, he's going to only get worse. Quiddy Pay, cheese in the camp, stand out again. He just doesn't want to go to Superstar because he's just getting free freaking upgrades every time. All right, it's negotiation time. $67 million. Uh, A couple of big names here. Buckner is an interesting one. That's a very fair contract. He's an X-Factor. I imagine he should be good for at least another season. So one year, 15.5. Glad he uh, accepted it. Kenny Moore, maybe. Stewart, maybe. Uh, Ryan Kelly, probably not, to be honest. No? 31 years old, 78 overall. He's not bad, but not the best either. I think we can do better and definitely can do cheaper. Obviously, we uh, added Antonio Gibson. He was a free agent, and uh, he's the backup. Uh, Kenny Moore. I mean, I guess the value as a number three, he does look pretty good. A one-year 13, is it's up there, but it's not like the worst. And then Stewart, I want to see how he plays again to give him another contract if we're going to. Uh, but we do have money. That's good. Oh, man, our DBs are selling. At least somebody wants to progress their career. Robert Beal is now a star dev. Another really good season. Let's see if we can finish off with a bang. We cannot. We changed the Bills playbook as we were losing a bunch of games early. And uh, I don't know. I mean, we, we ended up winning more games. Uh, I changed it at this point. I was like, two and three. Eh, some pretty bad teams in here. Uh, and then, you know, we kind of just killed it except for the final two weeks but they were two really solid teams so it is what it is what can you do uh, let's take a look at the numbers see how we played with the change up Lamar Jackson ooh, ooh. I suppose Taylor was oh in fairness I say ooh, but 26 rushing touchdowns you take 10 of those away which is what the average team probably would have and you know that's that's 44 passing touchdowns so it is what it is Pittman was great Pierce was decent Ayuk was okay Porter was pretty good uh, looking at the O-line was still really good. Three guys with 100-plus tackles. Maybe that gets Brents to star. That would be great. Sack totals, Buckner and Payne. Uh, Payne. Pay with 10 each. 
Five for Stewart, two and a half for Beal, which is low, but he did go up in dev. Whitmore, maybe rookie of the year with four interceptions. It's pretty good. Gay was perfect. Sanchez is perfect when it comes to yards per, you know, punt with a 50 on the dot, which is kind of cool looking. Uh, let's take a look at the yearly awards. Josh Allen, the MVP. I mean, maybe we're, we're kind of smart for, uh, for following that team, right? Just maybe. Of course, Jonathan Taylor, the offensive player of the year, defensive player of the year, goes Devon Miller. Rookie of the year goes to Javier Iglesias. Rookie of the year on defense goes to Whitmore. Uh, best quarterback, Lamar, back at seven. Jonathan Taylor, best running back, obviously. Best wide receiver, not on the list. Touchdowns are lacking. O-line was at five and nine. D-line uh, at number nine. Best linebacker, not on the list. Best DB, number eight for the rookie. And the best kicker in the league, uh, with a dev up to star. We have two overalls on the Bengals. However, we have a very inexperienced defense going to be against a very experienced offense. 14 all right now. We're doing our best to keep up. Offense is doing a damn good job, but defense is really struggling. Second half, 28 to 24 right now. A very close game against a really good team. 31 to 24. It's going to be a tied game. Nice drive. What a clutch drive. Only 44 seconds left. The Bengals have run out of time, and we've won a playoff game and against a very talented team at that. Lamar Jackson, two interceptions, but he was slanging that thing. I didn't actually pay attention to the rushing numbers for Lamar, but Jonathan Taylor was pretty damn good. Receiving Pittman was really, really, really good. Uh, defensively, sack totals two and a half for Buckner, two for Quiddy Pay, one for Stewart. Whitmore with a half uh, of Isaiah Rogers is on their team with an interception. Of course, he gets a pick on us. Didn't pay attention to kicking, but it seemed to be fine. I mean, it seemed like we were hitting everything. Quiddy Pay now an 85 overall. Got him the fifth year option, so we don't have to pay him just yet. We have the Quiddy <laughs> to the division around. Who is it? The Chiefs. It's the Chiefs. Seems they almost lost to the Jaguars. In fairness, so who knows? 86 to the 87. Got Browns and the Bills waiting in the mix. Three to zero. Defense did an okay job. Gave up a touchdown. Drove down for a touchdown. Missed the extra point though. Gave up a touchdown. 16 to 14. 16 to 21. This is a lot of scoring, man. Nice start to the second half. This Colts team, dude. I don't know what it is, but they can put up some points. Oh my God, they're actually gonna choke it though. Defense comes up clutch. And we're going to win a super high-scoring game. Give it up to Lamar Jackson and his offense. Maybe getting a little bit more help from his teammates than maybe just himself on his own. But didn't throw two interceptions. I mean, that's pretty good. I was getting all teary-eyed there, clearly. <laughs> Man, it gets dry in here, and it really kills me. Lamar Jackson did well on the ground. Jonathan Taylor was obviously great himself with three touchdowns. Pittman, pretty damn good. Porter was good. Scantley still on the team, surprisingly. Hardman's still on the team, too. Ayuk was decent. Let's take a look at the defense. Uh, Quiddy Pay did two, inter uh, two sacks. Nice. Shaquille Leonard and Blackman with interceptions. And then Matt Gay missed the extra point, but he did hit two of two for field goals, which were obviously more important. You know what I thought about? I would probably move Zier to left tackle because he sucks at pa power blocking and then just run Durand at guard because he's uh, a bit better in just in general at pass blocking, but a little bit better at power. Four to zone coverage for a guy that really struggled there. 70 zone coverage. Now, that's a really good upgrade. Championship round against, I mean, either way, it's not an easy one. The Colts or the, the Browns or the Bills. Of course, it is the Bills. I mean, we're using their scheme, so... Who better to do well with it than the actual team we're taking it from? That sounded really weird, but championship round for the Colts. I mean, that's something I did not expect to hear, so already kind of a dubski. See if we can finish it off with a Super Bowl, though. The Bills, I think, are right to left, and they are 7-0, seven 7-7. Zero, seven seven. Here's the scoring. Here it is. Look at us zooming. Oh, my. 24-7. 24-14. Defense makes a play. We're headed to the Super Bowl, I think. Probably, yeah. Wow, this offense, man. Okay, so I might have just been using the Bills' offense poorly before because anytime I've ever used their playbooks, never really done well. But this has gone well. Of course, it probably helps that you know we actually have a good, fast quarterback to use. Wow, Jonathan Taylor, talk about a performance. 208 yards, three touchdowns on 15 carries. Receiving was, I mean... 
spread around, pretty tame. No one really had a crazy game outside of Pittman, I guess, because of two inter- uh, two touchdowns. Sack totals, uh, Shaquille Leonard with a half, uh, Stewart with the other. Blackman with another interception. Kenny Moore with an interception. Not bad. Not bad. The Super Bowl. I wouldn't say it's really destiny. I think we're just playing well. I really do. It's not like, you know, underdog. I mean, we would be the underdog in those situations, in fairness. But, you know, it's not like crazy underdog. It's just we're killing it. You know, we're killing it. Uh, Another really bad upgrade, but it's an upgrade nonetheless. And it is the Giants. The problem with this one is that it's likely going to be one of those elite quarterbacks like Herbert or something, which would be such an L. We definitely want to take a look at that. But first, we want to see our dev ups, if we had any, which apparently are not on offense, which is such an L. And then defensively, Whitmore goes a superstar. Brents is still normal, though. Cross is still normal as well. Such an L in those categories, but what can you do? Um... Yeah, I mean, that's this is the team. This is what the team looks like. No real dev ups, which is unfortunate. Let's take a look at who their quarterback is, I suppose. Uh, I guess I could just take a look at all these games anyway. So, barely beat the Saints. Uh, pretty good points against the Cardinals. Pretty good points against the, Gi- uh, the Packers as well. And as usual, it is Justin Herbert. Ugh, like, it should be Daniel Jones. It's unfair, dude. Like, he's not going to be a giant, but what can I do about it? Like, they got Geno as well. Well, we haven't beat by two. Oh, and Rashawn Gary. Nice. We haven't beat by two overalls. Could you imagine we lose because Rashawn Gary kills us? All right, going to the end of the game. The big one, the Super Bowl. Nice defense and touchdown, but they get a touchdown right after. Nice bounce back. 21-7. to Kind of like a lot of the other games. Oh, they got a touchdown before half. Huge touchdown after half. Huge touchdown after our touchdown after half. It is all tied up, and we are choking this game away. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, you don't get the stop here. You lose. I mean, talk about a choke. Talk about a choke. I mean, they're probably playing for the field goal here, no? And our offensive line, our defensive line, Brents with the shot to the knee. Isaiah McKenzie has a chance. To hopefully not fumble as he gets only to the 18. Yikes. I almost want to run the ball because they're giving us a look. Like, we're going to have to clock it, you know, anyways. But I'm not going to. That DB is making a pretty good play. Hand out of bounds. They're going to say he catches it and gets out. Or not. I, I actually kind of want to take a look at this. Was that not actually out of bounds? Or does the hand not count? Or did the knee go down first? Ah, the knee did go down first. All right, clock is draining. And that throw is not bad. The right foot out. Nice to the 38. That'll count. Pittman. Thank God it's not grounding. That's pretty good. Bro, I get we backed up a bit, but, like, no pressure. We're chilling. And he misses because we backed up too far. Every throw this season is like that. Every single one. It's so dumb. You know, where you would expect a quarterback to be hitting it. And we're going to go for the super. Oh, please don't catch this. Thank God he got popped. All right. Long field goal, 55 yards for Matt Gay. We really didn't help him. And he hits it because he's him. Overtime. Is it us? It's us. Offense is doing well. Come on. Fourth and three. They get a chance at the ball anyways. And we are going to go for it. That definitely tells me that the game doesn't actually have it coded. They're like they don't they don't actually know that you know they can go for this here, it seems, but I think it's a smart call anyways. Open, little bad of a throw, Pittman down to the one. Let's see if they can do it. I mean you should be able to punch it in. Thank you. You get a stop, you win the game. Fourth and two, it could be here. You go for the midi blitty. I mean, I need Cross to get up there to have a chance to stop him. Got to cover the running back. And to the outside, swatted. We win the Super Bowl, the rookie of the year. Whitmore knocking the ball out. I thought he was going to catch it. Punches the elbow. And we win the Super Bowl with Lamar Jackson as a cult. What a game. What a statement. Now, not the greatest playoff run from Lamar Jackson, to be honest, in ups and downs, but one of the greatest Super Bowl performances ever is not a bad way to cap it off. Not a bad way at all. This young defense 
getting gashed by pretty much everyone every time, but made just enough plays with takeaways to give this high-powered offense a chance. And uh, that's exactly what happened. This high-powered offense put up massive points in pretty much every playoff game they had. And they uh, they really proved that sometimes it really just does take one guy. One guy. Obviously, it's a team effort, but as far as like where this team expects to go without a quarterback, not a Super Bowl win. Definitely not a Super Bowl win. Jonathan Taylor's been amazing in this one, but Lamar Jackson is obviously uh, a bit of the heart and soul of this team as he is hoisting the Lombardi as an Indianapolis Colt. Talk about a performance. 450 yards, four touchdowns, zero interceptions. On top of Taylor's two rushing touchdowns. A lot of points, man. A lot of points. Imagine we actually like built up a good defense. Like That would be insane. Quiddy Pay was pretty good. Rashawn Gary, we talked about, did actually play well. Buckner was good. It's a battle. It's a battle. Quiddy Pay with an interception. He's him. Oh, my. Yeah, I mean, we're going to try to win uh, a Super Bowl within the next two seasons. Obviously, if we win the one next season, that'll be it for the rebuild. And then if we don't win the one, then we'll have that one more fourth season, if you will. Uh, but let's get on to our re-signing, see who we want to keep. Grover Stewart uh, definitely kind of – is it Grover? Is it Glover? I don't I, – I, my brain somehow has forgotten already. I am so dumb. It is Grover. Okay, my brain was right. Center. Man, he was actually really good. He's been on the top 10 list for the AFC uh, every single time. Not allowing a lot of sacks. And we've seen centers that allow sacks. I think you maybe just keep the team intact, no? Like, why Why not just keep the team intact as much as possible? Uh, what else we got in here? A few backups. How was Gibson? I mean, I'll pay a backup if he's worth it. 3.6 isn't the worst I've seen, but I think we can just pay some randomer again. Uh, Stewart was a little bit of a down year, but he's still really talented. So uh, last time he went to free agency, this time he actually sticks around a one-year 12. He, he knows what that free agency market looks like, and he ain't a fan. Uh, so 32 mil. This one, obviously, we're not going to go crazy like we did last time with you know a wide receiver or anything like that. So 32 mil. We probably do have to pay some players like Buckner is going to be on the list again soon. Um, not even soon, but like this season. Uh, wide receiver is fine. Tight end. I mean, O-line's fine, right? Ryman, I mean, he's a guy that you probably have to replace, even though he's actually not terrible. But I don't want to pay a guy that's not like the greatest. He has played well, though. I don't know. I don't actually know. I really don't. Uh, and then defensively, edge, potentially. Beal wasn't great, but he did get the breakout, which... Definitely adds value. Safety, Nick Cross, maybe. I don't know. There's not really a lot of needs we have. With us keeping the DTs intact, though, I'm very glad we did not take Bartel, though. That would have been just a wasted pick. Um, some decent names in here, but don't know if we're willing to pay anyone. Like, JC Horn is great, but, like, do you see him being a free agent? I don't know if I see him or Greg Newsom being free agents. You know, I just don't. I don't see it. I finally wore down Antonio Gibson on a super nutty deal. A three-year six. A three-year six we just robbed him on. Pick 32 in the second round because obviously we won the Super Bowl. The Ravens are in shambles. Uh, and I think there's a good chance we take a DT for once uh, as we're potentially going to lose two next season. Stewart, I imagine. I mean, at some point, he's going to be unusable, right? And Roan... Is pretty similar to Bartel, maybe not as good, uh, but maybe his dev is better. I don't know. Uh, and we have a bunch of other like kind of mid-level talents. I think we want a, one more offensive lineman. I think we kind of just Bullocks looks better, but I think we'll probably end up waiting between Bullocks and Cooks. Uh, end up saving a lot of picks every single time we do the classic wait until one's gone kind of situation. And then Tony Mills doesn't look terrible either. Maybe grab him as well. Um, you know, the left end I had is gone. Roan, probably, usually these guys do last a little bit longer, but, ooh, he's actually kind of better than Bartel. You know, now that you actually look at those, you know, ratings. Uh, now nah, wait a little bit. I'll wait a little bit. We don't absolutely need him anyways, because, once again, he's going to sit no matter what. So, without a third-round pick, trading down here could add a little bit of value. So, let's see what we can do. 79 is a little bit too far. I think I want, like, 74. Oh, wow. That's a really freaking fair trade. I'll take that. By fair, I mean fair for us. 
Gonna go to pick nine. Hope he's there. If he's not, either way, I landed a nice pick. Oh, I seen Bullocks, and I was like, you know, because it registered in my head that was one of my players. I was a little worried, which means that Cooks is there, so we might have to trade up if we want him. Uh, but Brenton, Roan, Rone, whatever, is hidden. Okay. I was just expecting we're going to get, you know, maybe like a 73, 74 overall normal, but he's 21, so... You know, you, you get a season of a guy that's just, you know, developing and behind the background. And no, we got ourselves a hidden development trade player. Will he probably be star? I would say so, but that's beside the point. Uh, linebacker's also decent here. I like Eddie Cooks, though, so I'm going to try to get to Chicago. I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that. You know what? I am going to trade him. Ryman and 128 for 74. I think that's beyond fair. He's a really good tackle. It's just we'd have to pay him this season. And we already have a left tackle that's kind of been worked up. Or we put, you know, zero there. Whatever works. And then we're about to take another lineman here. So we're perfectly fine on linemen. Just trying to stay cheap. Eddie Cooks is our guy. Welcome to the team, Eddie Cooks. Hit development trait. It's a win. I also thought he was a little stronger than that. But it is what it is. Let's go to the next pick. Hopefully Mills is still there. But at the same time, I mean, we do have a lot of linemen. So I'm not really like, you know, we absolutely need him or anything like that. I also maybe should have, yeah... I maybe should have slowed down the sim a little bit to grab one of the linebackers, but it's a little late now. Uh, Tony Mills, a bunch of A's except for the run block, similar to the left tackle that might be our new starter, the center we got. And yeah, hidden development trade, strength, speed's decent. That guy looks like your future center because he's only 6'2". I also damn near died there. I don't know what the hell I just said. I was like, sit a sit a sit a Yeah, kind of debating, uh, or not debating, but super regretting the non-decision on the uh, the linebackers. 21 years of age for Stern. Could use a backup in general. But what age is Beal? Is Beal 24 now? He's 24. He might have comp. 24. He's not bad, though. I think I'll take Stern anyways. Just as, you know, depth, I suppose. You need it. Abu Cam is going to need a contract. I'm not going to pay him. Uh, well, at least have depth, I suppose. A B power move. Block shit is so bad, though. But I'm going to take him anyways. Stern. Normal dev. A little bit slower than I would have thought. But 274. Damn near a DT. Look at the talent on this guy. Look at this guy. He is super talented. And in the sixth round, we're going to be taking Braden Simmons, who has elite kick power with a B accuracy. Elite strength is also interesting. We're going to grab him. Uh, normal development trade, that's a lie on the strength, but 97 kick power. So the leg strength, definitely not a lie. All the QBs suck, but this guy's at least decently fast. Matt Polly, and he's hidden. Didn't actually look at the throw power, which is a little bit of an oversight, but hidden QB, interesting, I guess. Once again, it's a player where it really doesn't matter unless he's like literally an X-Factor, which I highly doubt. 57 overall, I went straight to him. I didn't even look at the overalls. I've seen a couple of 70s in there, I think, but... Paranoid sense of pressure. This guy is like the ultimate useless pick, but hidden is still kind of fun, isn't it? Still kind of fun. Useless, but fun. 71, 71, 76 for Mills. Yeah, not a great draft class based on the pure overalls, but at the same time, I've seen a few. Ooh, 81 finesse. Yeah, I'm not really sure why his overall is bad unless his awareness sucks. That is a good player. Um, but yeah, I've seen you know a lot of low overalls that get good dev. Not going to happen with the DT, sadly. Uh, and then left guard Eddie Cooks, I suppose, is built to play left guard or tackle. Probably more of a tackle than a guard, to be honest. So maybe put him at right tackle for the future Braden Smith replacement, maybe? What's the dev of Mr. Eddie? Ooh! Superstar! I kind of want to start him now, but he's going to play tackle. Uh, Mills, Tony Mills, also hidden development trait. Typically the higher overall. Yeah, this guy built exactly the same as Durand. I think we're actually going to move to right guard and then put Zero at left tackle. Star Dev. Uh, he would actually be our center, so I'm going to put him at center. Season 3. Uh, things have changed a little bit. We have a lot of uh, youthful players in now. You know, new right guard technically with our right guard playing our left tackle spot. But I think that fits a little bit better. Hopefully Ryman wasn't just like absolutely carrying which I don't think he would have been. I think Zier is a pretty good lineman himself. Power blocking is really iffy, but Ryman did have a couple of bad ratings himself, if I'm not mistaken. So, 
you know, it's not like he was perfect either. Uh, and then looking at the receivers, you know, everything's basically the same. Running back is even the same. Uh, and then defensively, linebackers didn't change. I mean, nothing really changed. I mean, we just we kept what we had, which I think is perfectly fine, especially considering the draft capital we had. And, you know, here we are. It was good enough to win a Super Bowl last season, so hopefully it's good enough again. Again! Nick Cross is selling. Things are going pretty well. Start of the season off not great and definitely better now. Uh, decent bit of money, but also a decent bit of names to re-sign. Uh, I think, once again, we did a really good job with getting rid of Ryman when we did. Buckner, I think he will probably regress kind of hard, but a 14.5 is worth it for an X-Factor, who will probably be at worst, like a 70, uh, 70 84 overall, I'd say. Braden Smith, I think, will get another long-term contract. It's going to cost us a lot, though, because he has, like, no interest in re-signing. Ugh, near 20 mil per is going to be some pain. Uh, Quiddy Pay, he's been worth the money. Uh, I mean, even this would be on the low end. But a four-year 56, he takes. So we take it back. Don't know what that means. <laughs> We're not taking it back. You're staying Nick Cross long-term, baby. Yeah, I'm surprised we actually do have the money we do. I'm trying to think of, like, why that's the case. Because, uh, you know, we we fix Lamar's contract. He's being paid the uh, crazy amount that he was being paid. So not really sure how we have so much money. Uh, do we have anyone coming up? See an 11 mil there. So... Leonard, I mean, he'll be gone before we have to really worry about paying him. Uh, Ayuk, we have to pay again, but I mean, we already have him up for a crazy money. Why? Why is it that we're we've got a little bit of money here? I'm a little surprised. Well, he may already be an X factor. He will get XP, being Lamar Jackson, for his breakout 15k XP. Not bad. So we had another good season. Sadly, Braden Smith said he's going to free agency. We offered him a three-year 60, uh, and he said no. Uh, 13 and four isn't good enough for a bye week. Lamar Jackson putting up some numbers. Full season with the Bills cooking up. Uh, but yeah, I uh, guess we we'll just have to tag him. I suppose that's the option. Ryan Kelly was in there as well and. I think we might actually let him go. We're kind of wasting some of these youthful players. First for yards, first for touchdowns, NFL record, eight interceptions only, seven rushing touchdowns. As far as like a non-God squad goes, is maybe the best season I've ever seen, right? 59 touchdowns, almost 6,000 total yards. I mean, if that's not MVP season, I don't know what is. Uh, Jonathan Taylor was pretty damn good still. Pittman killed it. Pierce is great. Ayuk was solid. Porter was decent. Offensive line, I will admit, maybe it's because of the scheme, but worse than before. I will say worse than before. Two guys over 130 tackles. Uh, sack totals, pay was decent. Uh, Beal was better, but not great. Stewart was by far as worse he's been. And then Buckner was by far the best he's been. Went more with three interceptions. Gay was pretty good. Uh, Rigoberto Sanchez under 50, probably going to be replaced by the rookie punter we just got, assuming he needs a contract, which I think he does. And then MVP's got to be, right? Lamar Jackson back on top. Lamar Jackson, the MVP. Pittman, Offensive Player of the Year, which, I mean, he was going to get a dev up anyways. Maybe goes the X Factor right out the gate, though. Uh, best quarterback, best running back, best wide receiver. Uh, O-line at number two and three and nine. D-line, not on the list. Really? Buckner? I was about to say, number nine, I, I just completely missed it. Linebacker, not on the list. DB, not on the list. Kicker at two. Very good season. Should be filled with some dev-ups as well. Can it be a back-to-back -back Super Bowl season? Not saying the Broncos here at 8-9 are a guaranteed win, but we should have a good chance at it. All right, going to the end of the game. Broncos get three. We come back with seven. They come back with three. We come back with another seven. I'm not a math expert, but uh, if the pace continues, 17-6, not our best performance so far. Yeah, leaving the Broncos linger, and that will be putting them away. But, yeah, not a great performance, but once again, did enough. Mar Jackson with three touchdowns. Not a great rushing performance by anyone. Uh, receivers, you know, a couple of touchdowns, nothing crazy. Defensively, nothing crazy there either. Murray with a uh, interception. Roan with a uh, a sack. We take it. We take it. Kicking was perfect, and I mean, it's pretty basic game. Nothing crazy. Pretty straightforward. With this upgrade, Jonathan Taylor is now a 99 elusive back as well. So uh, 
It's all receiving back from here. He's kind of talented. All right, who's in the division around? I don't think I see none on the bottom of the screen. Is it the Chiefs again? The Bengals. 88 to their 83. They seem to be getting worse, I suppose. We beat them once. Do it again. Now, Houston did make a Super Bowl. They're about to face the Chiefs, though. I'm not, I'm not going to put my eggs into that basket, but will it matter? Because, uh, of course, we have to beat the Bengals here, who are definitely giving us a troublesome time. Touchdown before half makes this a tough one. And it's going to be down by two half, up by five now. Come on, offense. Nice. 33 to 21. Bengals aren't done yet. Nice drive. That'll put them away. 40 to 28. We're back to the championship round. This Colts team's cooking. I like it. Lamar Jackson's having himself a time. The running was very simple. I mean, there's only three running backs that, you know, got touches. No quarterbacks involved in that one. Uh, what about defense? Nothing for sacks. Once again, another straightforward one, pretty much. Whitmore with a pick. Might have been all the difference. I don't even know if I wanted to be the Texans. I kind of feel like uh, I'd rather just have the team that I know is good rather than playing the team that uh, that somehow beat the Chiefs, you know? Just something fishy about a team that shouldn't be winning against the Chiefs beating the Chiefs, you know what I mean? Uh, but nice little comeback. Defense is doing okay, but offense has got to keep up. Last time we played the Chiefs, it was a super high-scoring game. And that, that could be the dagger. That is a tough one to come back from. I mean, we know our defense isn't going to be able to stop them. Offense gets its chance. They have to take it. Oh, no. From the nine, we got to come in and stop them. Why are we playing three-man deep? Oh, Lord, this isn't good. Stewart, somebody want to get in? Back of the end zone. What a hit. Shaquille Leonard says, not today. And with that hit, they're like, well, maybe we, let's relax a little bit. Looks like they might actually be kicking the field goal. And we got timeouts, though. Oh, my God. I've seen us get smoked. We got timeouts, so playing for the overtime is definitely not a chief situation that I'm used to seeing here. And, oh, my God. We are getting smoked by that line. But here it is. At best, they can do is tie. We will have about 16 seconds and maybe take a shot. Probably end up losing the game before overtime, knowing us. Not going to happen to the block, obviously. 16 seconds. Here we go. See what they do on the kick. They will kick this deep, which Winton's actually pretty fast, so don't know how I feel about that. They want us to run the ball. Eh, kind of want to throw it. Jefferson, why the hell is the whole lineup, like, so messed up? I don't know if I like this. Let's just run this. Give me a block, taking a shot to whoever has the best look. I don't care who it is. It's Ayuk. I mean, it's got a chance. Dropped. What a try. I don't care if he's a smaller guy. If you're going to give me a one-on-one -on -one with anyone, I'm taking it. I'm taking the one-on-one. -on -one. I'm taking a shot with Pierce. And that's going to be another no-go. This is what I like to call now the run. <laughs> it was worth the try. A couple of shots didn't happen, though. Let's see if Jonathan Taylor can do something crazy with it. And he gets first down stats. <laughs> pads the stats a little bit. Almost said stats the pads. Haven't said that in a while. All right, let's see who wins the toss. Heads. Every time, bro. I'm the worst in the world. All right, let's see it. Come on, throw an interception. Oh, my God. Is that a penalty? Oh, they're going backwards. Fourth and five. They're going to have to punt it. A score wins. Third and 11. Come on. I feel it. Oh, we did not audible because the in the zone. I don't know how they would be in the zone. Maybe, I guess, this specific time. Ayuk over the middle. Come on. Somebody get open. And that's a tough one. Tight end's going to be a yard short. You got Lamar Jackson. I think you go for it. No? Trust the inside. Oh, my God. Free look. Holy. The stiff arm of the gods. That was a close call. Offense is moving. I mean, you don't need much. You don't even need the touchdown. Did we get it? We win, and we're headed back to the Super Bowl. Let's take a look at the numbers. Lamar Jackson kind of outplaying Patrick Mahomes. Just saying. Pacheco did have two rushing touchdowns. So they had three rushing touchdowns. We had two, so technically similar. I don't know, but Pittman was pretty good. But, wow, Kelsey and Hardman. Talk about performances. That is nuts. Sack totals a bunch of guys with one. Kicking was perfect. I mean, that was just a clean game, and it came down to the wire. 
That matchup has become uh, the new top tier matchup in the league. The Niners. Could this be the perfect rebuild? Could we win back to back Super Bowls? We obviously have to take a look at our dev ups, but I first want to see, because the Niners aren't a team that usually gets in. I want to see how they got here. Beat the Giants with 41 points scored. Uh, beat the Buccaneers. We beat them as well. They were like 10 and 1 at the time uh, by 8. And then beat Chicago by 3. I mean,. Other than that first game, things are saying that they might be a low-scoring type team, but that defense might allow them to win games with that low-scoring type stuff. Uh, Ayuk does not go up in dev. Pittman does. A little surprise that Porter didn't. Alec Pierce doesn't go up in dev. And then defensively, uh, no dev ups. Oh, no, Kenneth. Kenneth Murray, the 27-year-old, or about to be 27, is now a superstar. Super underspoken of player here. He's, uh, he's a big part of this team right now. Let's get that scheme fit, because why not? Because why not? Great coverage ratings. Block, block shed is a little bit bad, but he's a pretty good player, actually. Underrated signing, for sure. 89 overall Colts versus the 87 overall Niners. Let's see it. Could it all be over? Nice turnaround touchdown after stopping them. They get a nice turnaround touchdown after giving up a touchdown. 14 all. This half has gone by quickly. No score there. 24-14. Come on, offense. Ooh, this team is struggling. 31 to 28, 31 to 35. We're moving. Maybe a little bit too fast. Third and 10, you need a touchdown. You got to have it. Can't go for the field goal here. Like, you can, but I d absolutely would not be doing this. Pittman. Nice. I don't know why the safety played off so hard. He's seen the slant and the deep end. He was probably thinking, I need to cover that. Didn't get it in time, and Pittman scores the touchdown, the game-leading touchdown. But the Niners have so much time. It hurts. Second and 20. What the hell? Hello? Where are you headed? What, hello? I'm going to let this play. I kind of want to see what happens here. Okay, it stopped. Oh, wow. A 25-yard play. I'm surprised they even knew where he was. Okay, so this is a uh, field goal situation. Of course, they have freaking Evan McPherson, so they don't even have to worry about being iced. Back-to-back -back overtime games, this time in the Super Bowl. Love it. Is that McCaffrey is the holder? Who is that? Uh, I think, is it theirs? Oh, Lord, it's their ball. Oh, man. Team's learning. Wow. Man, they do not care about us. Fourth and 12. Super Bowl legacy on the line. Can we convert? Let's see what we got. There goes Pittman. There's Pittman. Yeah, I don't know how you leave him open. I just don't. I think if you get the touchdown at this point, you go for two, right? But do we have to worry about that? Do we have to worry about that? We do. From the two. Do you have the game-winning play? Double slants. Is that just the play? Is that the play it is when you got Pittman? The Colts win a Super Bowl back-to-back. -back. Nobody can cover him. 46 to 45 for the win. Like, why are they not up on him? Maybe they're just worried about, like, a street? I don't even know, dude. I guess simplicity sometimes is the best strategy, no? You think it's going to be something crazy. It's like, nope, simple slants. Boom, done. Call it a day. Call it a rebuild. Nice. Back-to-back -back Super Bowl victories. Lamar Jackson and company are cementing themselves as some of the greatest ever. Maybe the greatest ever. Unbelievable. And it's not even the craziest team. You know, our right end's not great. Our cornerback, two isn't that great. Our safeties aren't that great. Two linebackers aren't that great. It's just an offense that can keep up with anyone. And, I mean, talk about carrying a team. This offense just... I mean, it is the heart and soul of this team. I mean, this offense is unbelievable. Five touchdowns for Lamar Jackson. Brock Purdy, the starting quarterback, still of the Niners. Debo with a bunch of rushes, did really well with a 64-yarder, it seems like. Van Jefferson? Pittman with four touchdowns. He's him. Wow. Defensively, uh, nothing crazy. Kicking, once again. I mean, pretty tame game. Just, we outscored him. But let's take a look at the team. Let's uh, recap this, this uh, rebuild, if you will. Lamar Jackson, 97 overall, not the perfect quarterback, but damn close to it. 97 speed, he must have got a speed and an Excel upgrade or agility upgrade. Uh, throw power 96, 89 deep, 90 medium, 94 short. 
you know, mid nineties for the rest of the stuff, like under pressure and all that. And 97 break sack is insanity, dude. He's kind of crazy. We really looked at Jonathan Taylor, but this is what he looks like in case you've forgotten. Let's take a look at Pittman now as a superstar. Deep route's not that great. He did get like a plus three or plus four recently, but yeah, a little bit slow, but super good. Very good at getting open and clutch at catching. Uh, Ayuk, 90 overall wide receiver number two. Kind of a realistic move for them. I could see him joining them or maybe uh, Jerry Judy or something at some point. Uh, Alec Pierce. Kind of got the short end of the stick. Never even got a dev up, even though he had a really good season this past season. Uh, you know, decent role player, I suppose. Tight end one, Porter. What a decision. Robert Porter, 86 overall superstar already. Talk about a top-tier talent. Offensive line, eh, do I really care about it? Not really. I don't really care. Uh, let's take a look. I guess Quentin Nelson will take a look at his overall because he's probably like one of the highest-rated linemen in the game. Uh, what is he, a number one guard for sure, left guard at least. Pass block finesse kind of sucks, but everything else is pretty good. Kind of sucks compared to the rest. Obviously, 86 is still like probably top 10. And then defensively, Kenneth Murray, we already looked at. Shaquille Leonard probably doesn't matter because he's regressing more than improving. Uh, I guess his own coverage is 73. Now he's kind of upgraded that a little bit, which is nice. Uh, anything else? Blackman, I actually haven't paid a, pen, you know, a whole lot of attention to him. 27 years old, 83 zone only, but... You know, decently athletic safeties, I suppose, that still have at least Nick Cross an okay ceiling. You know, Nick Cross is super young still, 82 zone, whereas Blackman is, you know, he's needs a dev up. He, uh, let's put it that way, he needs a dev up. Beal, 76 overall, he's been pretty mid throughout this thing, but his overall, you know, 85 power move is pretty good. We'd probably look to replace him, like, this season. Quiddy Pay got a nice little contract, 90 power move, 78 block shed, Pretty athletic, super strong, good player. Buckner, I am actually curious how bad of an overall he's gotten to. He is so 88 block shed, only 84 finesse. Still good enough, but yeah, it's not not the best. Brent's never developed, which really makes me sad because he had all the potential in the world. 86 man coverage, but 78 overall normal. He's about to be 25, I believe. Not the best work we've seen. Uh, and then Whitmore, the superstar corner who saved the hell out of us. 94 man coverage, superstar dev already. Super talented. And I believe that to be it. Nope, Mapu. Mapu as well. 80 overall. Mapu with no block shed, but 84 zone coverage. 73 man is really good. One of the highest coverages you probably get as a linebacker at his age. And that's going to be it. Hope you guys enjoy this one. I mean, Lamar Jackson as a Colt definitely worked out. To say the least. Uh, maybe we still do a Colts rebuild at some point soonish with, you know, Anthony Richardson and Levis, but I might just leave that to the draft unless this actual trade happens. Who knows? It's been kind of the, the rumor mill, the speculation buzz lately, this week specifically. But that's pretty much going to be it. If you guys enjoyed this one, maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, really appreciate your continued support on the channel, especially, you know, during these later months, if you will. Uh, maybe follow me on Twitter, John Care. Second channel, Care plays for non-Madden content, which is Hogwarts Legacy uh, at the moment, which should have an episode tomorrow. Uh, you know, I'm recording this like a day before a dentist appointment, so who knows what happens? You never know if you're really unlucky. Every time I do a damn coin toss at, at in an overtime, I always lose it, and it's 50-50, so... You just don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and, uh, yeah, if you have any more suggestions for rebuilds, uh, you want to see, you know, some sort of scenario that I, I haven't done yet, I haven't thought about, you know, a different Lamar Jackson trade destination, and you really want to see it, or, you know, just a team I haven't done yet, that it makes a lot of sense. It's like, why haven't you done, like, a Cardinals rebuild with a, the projected Will Anderson, or I don't remember if I did a Texans, I think I did a Texans Bryce Young pick one overall, which is basically the same thing anyways. You know, something like that, let me know in the comment section below. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for next video, but until next video... See ya!